Hi guys, how are you doing today? Hope you are all having a sunny day. So, are you ready for new crazy stories I prepared for you? I have four for you today. Let's go to the first one, about OP's sister, who's planning on suing OP because she wants her to financially support her. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My father recently had a stroke. The hospital in APS determined he is unable to live on his own, and he was placed in a nursing home. My sister tried to say he could come back home, but it wasn't possible. She is 49 years old and has rarely been employed in her life, and she spends her time sleeping, smoking, or watching TV and internet. My parents always financially supported her. She is still living in their house. When my dad was incapacitated, we both tried to get power of attorney. He had no will or living will. I gave up the fight and let her have it after I found out I had cancer and needed to focus on that. My father is a veteran. His nursing home care is covered by the VA to the best of my knowledge. The money he had, which wasn't much, went towards the medical bills the VA didn't cover from his stroke. My sister can't afford all the bills for living in the house now that dad isn't there and the bank account is empty. To that end, she has filed a lawsuit for me to give her financial support. To be clear, it is for her and not for our dad. The house could be foreclosed on and she can't afford the electric or water bills or anything else. According to the lawsuit, she has been deferring payments and using a food bank. She is trying to have me support her via the lawsuit. It's not even about dad. I thought it might be a scam, but the lawsuit is real and she's claiming filial responsibility. I don't even live in Idaho or know any lawyers there. I live in Arizona. Is this lawsuit groundless and can I get it thrown out without a lawyer? I'm not bankrupt or in debt, but the surgery I had took a chunk of my savings. This is the craziest lawsuit I've ever seen. You can't just sue someone else to make them support you, other than within a divorce. If you could, I'd sue my entire town tomorrow and get payments from each of them. OP should call the state bar where the court is and get a referral for an attorney in that county. It gets a low-cost consultation typically. I'm a married father of two young children. On a DNA site, a close relative came up on my father's side, someone I'd never heard of. I asked my mom if she knew who he was, and long story short, she revealed that who I've known as my father is not my real dad. I'm a product of an affair that she had with a politician. I met with a politician about a week ago, and he told me he's always known that he was my biological father, but chose not to acknowledge me or support me because he was worried about his reputation. My mom and dad divorced when I was a toddler, and I lived with my mom all my life. We weren't poor, but definitely had a tight budget. The politician dad was asked by my mom for financial assistance, but he declined because he was worried how it would look. Now knowing about all of his denials and unwillingness to step up, I'm extremely pissed to put it lightly. I've consulted an attorney and have a few different options. One, have the politician do a certificate of legitimacy and be added to his will as an heir. All of this could be kept under seal until the time of his death, so he could keep his reputation while he's alive. But this would require my dad be willing to take his name off the birth certificate. Two, have the politician set up trusts or investments for my children and I. This could be done without involvement of my dad or the politician's family becoming aware. Three, do nothing. Let the politician escape all responsibility and keep this secret from my dad. OP has no right to any inheritance. His acknowledged and legitimate children have no right to an inheritance from him for that matter. What is the plan for extracting this from him? If it's do this or I'll expose you, you're walking a fine line of extortion, blackmail. Is this politician someone that is known on a national level? In the world we live in today, this is probably not going to hurt his reputation much. If he is agreeable to throwing some money OP's way, OP either needs to get it out right now or have it placed in an irrevocable trust right now with an independent third-party trustee. Any promises of future compensation through a will or revocable trust are likely to be broken. This whole situation is horrible and crazy, but my husband took a paternity test a few weeks ago and got the results back two weeks ago, saying our daughter wasn't his. I knew I didn't cheat, so we decided to test every option, and it turns out she isn't mine either. We want to sue the hospital where I gave birth, but I do not want to lose the girl I've raised for five years. I do want to know where the girl I carried for nine months went. 
Is there any legal precedent for this? I've been online and we've talked to a few lawyers, but apparently this is not a common thing. We're also very concerned with this information going public, since when I tried to look up other cases, I found mostly tabloid articles that included information about the families, and I do not want that for my daughter under any circumstances. What are my rights in this situation? Any help is appreciated. I'm tagging this as custody, divorce, and family, because I'm not sure what else fits. But if someone knows what other flair to use, I'm happy to change it. Thank you. OP needs to make an appointment at a children's hospital genetics department. They can look into this further and verify for sure the problem. There are a variety of issues that could cause the test to come back that way. Until OP has real bona fide genetic studies, she shouldn't do anything. If OP's daughter turns out to not be hers, that opens up a huge can of worms, and it depends on the state they live in as to the settled law. It is extremely unusual for this to happen in this day and age, with hospital protocols in place. I would do the evaluation first, then seek out a really good attorney that deals with custody issues to see their next steps. Going public is all kinds of wrong advice. Seriously, they have no idea if this other child, if there even is one, is even alive or in the U.S. A good attorney can help hire a private investigator to look into the situation, get records from the hospital, and do preliminary inquiries to see if OP even wants to look into this at all. I started getting weird neurological medical symptoms at the end of this year, and after about a month of pushing through and trying to work, my supervisor recommended I apply for FMLA since I was running out of sick days. I put in an application with my HR rep. My doctor says he sent the paperwork, and I stopped going in to work and start receiving paychecks. On weekends, I go to farmer's markets for my small business, and I kept doing that. But my husband did all the work. I would just sit there and talk to customers because I was sick of being stuck in bed. I would be exhausted for the rest of the week each time I did this, but it kept me sane. My therapist agreed. After two months of radio silence from work, I get an urgent call from the COO, who I have never met. He says I never qualified for the FMLA since I didn't work there long enough and demands I return to work the next day. I try to explain that I'm still sick, but he's incredibly nasty. Eventually, he says I either need to be at work the next day or send a doctor's note to the new HR rep. Apparently, the old one quit. It took me almost a week to actually get the note from my GP. The post-virus medical system is very backed up. And in that time, I heard nothing from them and got no answers to my questions. A while after I sent in the note, I get a call from the HR rep saying the board has put me on a medical leave of absence, which is normally something you have to apply for. And that means they don't subsidize my health insurance anymore. I can't afford the premium without a paycheck, so I move over to my husband's insurance. Then comes a multi-week dance of them demanding new doctor's notes, or my return to work last minute, over and over, while changing the story on how often they wanted them. My doctor started getting annoyed with how frequently I'm calling them, because all the notes clearly state that I shouldn't work until further notice. My issues are going to take a while to resolve. Then, I get summoned to a mandatory meeting on Friday with union representation. They reveal that they hired a private investigator to follow me to farmer's markets. They did this a full month before the COO called me, before I knew there was any issue with my FMLA application. They kept doing it for months after that too. They show me spy video of me talking to customers and lifting my purse as proof of me being able to work. When I try to point out that sitting in a field one day a week is different from a five-day work week in a skilled, exhausting service profession. They yell at me, call me an imposter, literally pulling open Webster's Dictionary, and threaten to take away my license, which I don't think they can do. They claim to have overpaid me by a few thousand dollars, but they'll forgive that if I resign and sign something saying I won't sue. The nightmare of this situation has given me stress-induced alopecia, hair loss, multiple panic attacks, and paranoid that I'm being filmed at markets. My doctors can attest to these symptoms. Also, no matter if they fire me or if I resign, the nature of this drama means nobody else in this field will want to hire me. Coworkers aren't replying to my texts anymore, so I think they've already started to blackball me. Do I have grounds for any kind of labor dispute or personal injury lawsuit? Why wouldn't they just fire me? Surely it would have been cheaper than a private investigator. 
It's legal for employers to hire investigators to surveil employees suspected of abusing FMLA leave. It's not uncommon for employees to take FMLA leave for supposedly debilitating injuries, and then the surveillance video shows them skiing, doing really strenuous yard work, doing the same type of work for another employer, etc. And often those employees can be justifiably disciplined, fired for FMLA misuse. That said, there is also a lot of case law saying that just because someone is on FMLA leave doesn't mean they have to be sitting at home the entire time in bed with the curtains closed. People are allowed to be out of the house while on FMLA leave, especially if it's shopping for necessities, going to the pharmacy, etc. So, one key issue here would be what were OP's general work duties with her employer, and what symptoms did OP or her doctor claim made her unable to work? And was her work at the farmer's market inconsistent with her claim that she was experiencing symptoms, making her too sick to work for her employer? If her job with her employer is incredibly strenuous, and that's why OP was too sick to work there, but well enough to work at the farmer's market, she might have a winnable case with FMLA retaliation if they fire her. Another issue is whether the employer had a uniform policy forbidding anyone on any leave absence from working in another job, and did they apply that to all employees on all leaves of absence? If they had no such policy, that would benefit OP, and OP might be able to win even if her second farmer's market job was similar in strenuousness to her main job. 